today we're going to do a bowl as opposed to cylinder. Uh, cylinder has a very flat base and kind of 90 degree angle at the bottom. So the walls go straight down and very flat base on the bottom. Whereas a bowl has a nice perfect curve that goes from across the whole profile of the pot. From the rim down to the base, back up to the rim again. And that's what you're aiming to get. You're going to concentrate on the inside of the piece as opposed to the outside and thinking about that perfect profile on the inside. Uh, I do cylinders first, basically because when you're starting out throwing, everything you make will possibly end up as a bowl. So to actually do a cylinder is a lot more difficult uh, to control to begin with. Uh, you start off in the same way. I'm going to be using, this is about 800 grams of toasted stoneware clay. Uh, but I'm also going to do a little bit of decoration on it, and this you can do when you're throwing, by adding just a little piece of a contrasting clay body. So this is a white stoneware clay body, just a little finger's width, and I'm going to put this on the side of my ball of clay and add it in, making sure I trap nowhere inside it. And then put it back into the ball shape. And this way you can see I've just got a little strip of a contrasting clay on the side. Again, make a point for your clay, actually firmly down the wheel head. And make sure that your clay is really nicely, firmly attached to the wheel head. Get your wheel head going as fast as possible. Drizzle some water onto it. And to make sure uh, that your, wheel, your clay is firmly attached to the wheel, there's a bit of clay, water onto the clay, hold your finger and press into the base so you can see that it's really nicely attached to the bottom. Then we're going to start coning up and centering down as before. For you people who are talking beginners, if you could just concentrate on getting the centering right before you actually try to throw the piece. Because if the piece isn't centered properly, you're never going to throw a perfect bowl or cylinder. So you have to uh, cone up, centre down a few times and really work on getting that properly centered to begin with. So, hands together, elbows tucked in so you don't want your arms moving around, looking directly down on top of the piece of clay and squeeze from the sides as your clay begins to come up. And a bit more water. I'm going to try bring up the clay a bit further. Thumbs over at the top so you can control the clay. When you've got it coned up, then centre down. Centre down by your elbows tucked in again, your hands attached somewhere, either at the wrist or I cross over at the thumbs. So this part of my hand is going to be pressing down and this part of my hand is going to control the vertical side. So looking directly above again, pressing down onto the clay. If you feel your clay beginning to stick, it's going to begin to drag on your hands and that's going to put the clay off. So make sure that you add plenty of water as you're doing this and your wheel's going as fast as possible. Directly down on top of it and pressing down. I'm controlling with my left hand the vertical side so it makes a really nice straight drum of clay. If you're not quite sure if it's centered or you're struggling with it, you can cone up again. So from the base, thumbs over, you want to cone the clay up a second time. So, for a nice cone, then hands joined at the thumbs, this part pressing, this part of your hand pressing down on the top, and this bit controlling the side. And again to centre down. If you find your clothes a little bit off centre, then either just as a little dance with your hands, press in with the left, press down with the right, until you find that the clay is moving through your hands, but it looks almost stationary. So if you hold your finger there, you can see that the clay is not moving around at all. It's perfectly centred. 
So at this point, I'm going to begin to draw out. So those beginners, practice your centering before you begin to draw out. The difference when you draw out from a bowl is when you draw out from a cylinder. With a cylinder, you press down and draw flat towards us. And that sets in that perfect square base. With a bowl, you don't want it to be flat and 90 degrees, you want it to be curved that way. So instead of pulling directly towards you, you want to be pulling towards you and lifting up slightly. So you set that perfect curve in the bottom. So elbows in, hands joined together. Your left hand is just cupping the clay and press down with your middle finger into the clay. And you want to go down until you're still left with about a centimetre at the bottom. Don't go any further than this because you'll find that when you underwire and take your bowl off, you might go through and you end up with a flower pot as opposed to uh, a bowl. So press down. If you're not quite sure how far you've gone down, you can take away the water and take a pin and press that down into the bottom. Put your finger to where it touches the clay. And I can see I've got quite a lot of clay at the bottom. So I still need to go down a little bit further. Press down a little bit more and that should be right. So as I draw out towards me, I'm going to draw out and up the way. So looking directly above the clay, draw out and slightly up. So I now have this kind of shape inside the piece as opposed to a flat 90 degree angle. And I'm going to consolidate, compress the top to make sure it's nice and level. And as always, I'm going to collar in slightly so that when I draw up, the wall won't flare out too quickly. So press in with the heel of your hand, bringing it over. So now you can see in the top of my pot, I'm going to go back in. When you're doing a bowl, the walls do want to go out the way, but to begin with, you want to take all the weight from the bottom up, so you want to get some height on it before you take it out the way. If you just draw straight out and use the central fuel forces to help you pull out, you find that it goes out, but you can't actually get another pull of the clay to bring it out, because you'll find that the wall just collapses. So you want to go for some height to begin with. So again, your left fingers on the inside of the pot, this first knuckle wrapped around your thumb, that's going to pinch in towards your fingers, lock, and then you're going to draw up towards your nose. Instead of drawing straight up towards my nose, directly above, I'm going to look slightly to the side, not ever so far, but just to draw the walls out slightly. So fingers in, my knuckle is pinched and locked, pinching in and locking and then beginning to draw up at the side. So you're only doing a little pull to begin with. Consolidate and level off that wall and I'm going to collar in by squeezing the clay in this side. So my second pull I'm going to pull up a little bit more clay. So pinching in at the bottom your wheels really slow down by this point. Pinching and drawing up that weight of clay from the base. And you press the clay at the top. Again, collar in. Your wheel needs to go faster when you collar in. You'll find it's easier. Remember to compress and always remember to slow your wheel down when you're drawing up. If you're not quite sure about how fast it should go, if you make a mark on your wheel head, either with your finger or with your sponge, and your wheel should be going at the speed that you can follow that mark round. If it's all a blur, your wheel's going too fast. I'm going to do another draw. Pinching at the base, and beginning to draw up towards my nose, slightly to the right and you can see that my bowl is beginning to come out slightly. I'm always taking away that excess water that's on the inside of the bits. 
Try to color in once more and do one last draw. Pinch right at the bottom, and I got this last piece of clay. And when you draw up, your fingers should be locked so that they're at the same position apart, get the base as they are at the top. That's how you're going to get a nice even wall as you pull up. So I'm going to room again, just make sure it's nice and even. And now I'm going to start to shape the bowl. Because now I can begin to draw it out slightly. So I'm going to use my fingers on the inside and I'm going to use my kidney beveled on the outside. So I drizzle a little bit of water on the inside so your fingers don't stick. Look to the side of your pot because you want to draw the pot to where you're uh, looking. So you want to pull towards your nose still, but your nose is at the side. So you wheel down, and begin to draw the side of your wall out of the way. And you want to think about the profile of the inside of the piece, because you can change the profile slightly as you go down when you turn the piece, when you finish it off later, when it gets leather hard. To begin with, you want to think about how it looks on the inside. So I'm going to use my fingers to begin with, to begin to shape the inside of this bowl. So I'm bellying out very gently, compressing on the outside with my sponge. Then I'm going to use I'm going to use my kidney on the inside of the piece to begin to belly out very slightly from here. So your pressure, you have to get a little bit more experience with that. But you don't impress too hard or you'll find at the very bottom of your pot down here, if you press down too hard too quick, it will collapse around here uh, because you're putting too much weight on the top of it. So it's all done in gentle increments to pull it out, making sure you add water every time so your fingers don't stick because that will send it to the centre. Gently pull out. Making a lovely bowl shape. And on the inside of my piece, a nice perfect gentle curve that goes from profile to profile and to the inside. Taking away the excess water on the inside of it and making sure that you can press down on the bottom and take away all the water so you don't end up with any S cracks. If you leave water sitting inside there and you don't press the clay down at the bottom, it will sit, it will get soggy, it will dry at a different rate to the rest of your pigs. And that's when you find that get a lot of cracking. Also if you let it dry too quickly, you'll get cracking in the bottom. So I'm taking away all the water in there and I'm taking a piece of chamois, making a little loop, gently over the rim and soften that rim so it's nice and rounded. The clay decoration with the two different clays, you'll see more when you turn the piece. Uh, it's all messy at the moment. I'm going to try and tidy it up with a metal kitten on the outside so you can see slightly how it looks. So I'm taking away that slurry. And you can see some very subtle white lines. And that's that piece of clay that I stuck in that's been wrapped around and spun around the pot. When you tidy this up, when you turn it, you're going to take away the top layer of the outside of the piece and that's going to become really crisp. So you'll see that decoration uh, when you turn the piece, which is what we'll do in the next session. With this, I wouldn't push it any further. But just remember, when you are pulling up and you're pulling out the way, as it gets wider, your walls get thinner. 
So don't go too thin as you pull up. You want to get all that weight from the bottom up before you go out so that you've got enough play there. So when it begins to thin as it gets wider, it's not just going to collapse. Then you it. Before you take it off the wheel, trim up and tidy up all that excess clay. Because you want to take away as much clay as possible before you take the piece off the wheel. Uh, that way it will dry much more evenly. And it just means you've got less clay that you have to turn when you come to turn the pot when it's level hard. Taking away all that clay kind of shows exactly what you've got down there as well. So, that's that one completed. Just turn up your wheel. And then, I'm not going to take this one off at the moment because it's not in a bat. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. Before I take it off. As if you do it on a flathead wheel, then you need to dry your rim at least before you go to slide it off, otherwise it might collapse. So get a hair dryer on the rim for a few minutes just till it stiffens up a little bit and then you can slide it off. Turn all that off later. So that will come through a lot of crystal when it's totally turned.